All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing? It's Todd from All Music, and we are moving into a new decade. We're going to do my top six picks, my favorite albums from 1980. And boy, am I looking forward to it. That is true. Super excited about this one. Um, as I kind of delved into uh, my list and trying to compile my list, I realized... Yeah, this is pretty much where I really started getting into music. And this is really where, you know, this is like my time, as you know, they say. Um, 1980, I was going to be, uh, I was in between, you know, freshman and sophomore in 1980. So 1980, I was a sophomore. Super exciting time and music, I was, it was a big passion of mine. And so uh, by this time, I was, I was all in and I was fully playing in bands and learning my instrument and whatnot and we were doing we were gigging all the time and it was quite fun a good group of friends and you know high school time whatever but uh, good times and I just this list is is amazing the only the only problem is it's only a list of six and oh my gosh there's a lot of music that came out in 1980 that uh, really could have made the list uh, but unfortunately didn't this time, but um, I still think I have a pretty good list uh, for me anyway, so I like it a lot. And let's go ahead and uh, get started with my number six for my top six picks of 1980. Um, yeah, so number six is is a great one, and this this album, boom. Pretenders. I mean, this thing just screams the '80s, doesn't it? I mean, this is their this is the Pretenders' first album, the first time we've heard from the Pretenders, and oh my gosh, what a killer album this is! Um, and back then, it was just f phenomenal. I'm, I mean, it's just got so many great songs on it, um, you know, as all of these albums do. But oh my gosh, I mean, Precious, The Phone Call, Up the Neck. Tattooed Love Boys, Space Invaders, The Weight. I used to play The Weight in my bands. Uh, Stop Your Sobbing, great song. Kid is great. Private Life, Brass and Pocket. Remember that one? And Lover, uh, Lovers of Today, Mystery Achievement, that bass line. I played that all the time in my band, The Suspects. Good bass line. It was fun to play. And then, oh yeah, this uh, the last one there, the uh, uh, Cuban slide. Um, oh, and then uh, let's see, yeah, the Cuban slide is I think is the last one on the album. Um, and then mm, porcelain, maybe that's maybe that's the last one. It's kind of got all these other demos and stuff like that. I think porcelain is the last one. Yeah, super great album, just chock full of just like I said, chock full, <laughs> great out, al uh, great songs. Um, from the Pretenders in 1980, I mean, boom, bam, they just came out of the box, out of the gate, just firing on all cylinders, and what a great sound that was. I wish I could play some right now. Love it. I love the Pretenders. I love, I liked them, you know, even after the Pretenders, and Chrissy Hine was doing her thing, and uh, oh my gosh, yeah, just such great stuff, and the music was it was kind of, you know, it was kind of raw, but it was very kind of, you know, 80s, kind of new wave, sort of punky as, as well. Kind of crossed that boundary between uh, a new wave and punk. That was kind of one of the cool things about it. But uh, super good. Number six in my top six of 1980, the Pretenders, Pretender album. All right, so let's uh, move on to uh, my number five and another great album the talking heads remain in light yeah this is another really good album just the feel of this time you know in music and uh i guess just kind of growing up when this stuff was you know you're, you're right at that you know young age and, and and this music was coming out and it was really not like anything that we were hearing uh frankly you know, I mean, look at how different already we started from, from you know, the 70s, 1979 even, and boom, into the 80s. Look how different it is already. It's changed dramatically just, you know, you know at the start of the decade for some reason. But um, uh, it's just a killer, groovy, funky, just new wave 
sort of art rock kind of sound by the uh, Talking Heads, uh, Born Under Punches, Cross-Eyed and Painless, great song, The Great Curve, Once in a Lifetime was a huge hit for him, Houses in Motion, S Seen and Not Seen, uh, Listening Wind and Overlord, uh, Overload, I mean, it's a really good, really good album, just really different and uh, boy, the Talking Heads, just another band that just really took off, uh, you know, their career just started with a uh, just a bang, you know, they were just boom, on their way. And there's a there's just a similar feel to a lot of uh, the albums, you know, up to this point. And even um, on my number uh, four uh, pick for 1980 as well, it's, it's very kind of similar in the style, you know, it's another police album, uh, Zenyatta Mandata. That's the one I was trying to think of the other day. I kept saying Regatta de Blanc and I already said that, but um, yeah, Zenyatta Mandata is a great album. Had this one, <clears throat> super cool album. These guys were making hits right and left. Uh, Don't Stand So Close to Me, Driven to Tears. That's such a good song, I love that one. Uh, yeah, this one, When the World is Running Down, You Make the Best of What's Still Around. Canary in a Cold Mine, kind of a funky, funny song, but but upbeat and cool. I, was, I liked it at the time. Voices Inside My Head, Bombs Away, Da Do Do Do, Da 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 Da, another funny song. Um, it was a hit, though. Uh, Behind My Camel, Man in a Suitcase, Shadows in the Rain, and The Other Way of Stopping. Super great album. Uh, big album for me back then and still is today. It's, I actually haven't heard this album for a while now that I, um, you know, went back and was looking at the 80s, but this was definitely like on the top of my stack at uh, at home for sure. Um, loved, loved it. Uh, so those first three albums, I mean, I was into at, at the time of release. So those were albums that I was definitely... Uh, definitely you know bought new and um you know was listening to when they were fresh and and just straight release you know in in this year 1980 um then it starts to change a little bit for me and and i found this next band a little bit later on in life uh a couple years after i graduated high school but and I'm not going to be any shock to anybody at this point if you've been watching my shows but it's Genesis. Uh, the Duke album is my number three album for 1980 uh, release. I didn't discover this album probably for a couple more. Uh, mm, yeah, probably uh, probably for a couple of years. I didn't really discover this album yet, but has become one of my favorite albums uh, of this particular year. Uh, it's not particularly my favorite Genesis album, but it is, you know, to compete with themselves is very difficult. They have a lot of great albums, in my opinion. And this is another great album. And it starts off with Behind the Lines, which just is an epic, epic album starter. I mean, it just takes you. This is a very interesting album, too, because uh, Peter Collins had, had a, you know, a pretty pretty brutal breakup with his wife. And so his vo his lyrics, his lyrical content and the feel of this um was kind of melancholy in a lot of ways um some of the some of the songs and and just the subject matter uh, was kind of a lot about heartbreak and things like that uh but you got duchess which is a great song guided vocals so many all these uh, man of our times is just so cool misunderstood was a big hit for him uh, misunderstanding i mean there must be some misunderstanding um Heath A's Turn It On Again was a big hit. Alone Tonight, that's a good hit. I think that was a hit too. Cul-de-sac is a great song, Please Don't Ask. And then the epic Duke's Travels and Duke's End. Just an amazing album from start to finish. Um, and this is my number three of 1980. Even with all the competition from other bands that were released here, I still like this album way on the top of my list, even though it's probably like in the middle of my list of favorite Genesis albums, uh, definitely probably in the middle, but it's, their albums are so good to me that, you know, that's just kind of the way it works, but 
definitely a good one. So that brings us then to uh, number two. Number two. I wonder what it's going to be. Anybody got any ideas? Um, this is another band that uh, definitely have uh, chosen before in my top picks over the throughout the 70s. They've been in my list for sure. And uh, once again, they released probably the album that possibly just sent them into superstardom. And let's see, let me get it for you. Yeah, so it was a uh, rush, permanent waves. This one pretty much kicked him into high gear with Spirit of Radio. Um, it was a pretty big hit. And then after this, it, for the next few albums, it was crazy for them. So 1980, they entered, uh, they entered the new decade with Permanent Waves and Spirit of Radio and Free Will was a hit, Jacob's Ladder, Killer Song, uh, I forget how to say that, Entre Noas, not sure, Different Strings, great, Natural Science, great. So these are, you know, some longer songs a little bit. You got a seven minute song and a nine minute song here and you only have six songs on the album, but killer six songs. I mean, geez, let's see. Here's more by Rush. I mean, they've got quite a few quite a few albums but um that's my number two pick for 1980 was rush permanent waves uh no slouch of an album it was a little bit hard for me to choose uh you know what was going to be my you know first and second album because i'm such a huge rush fan uh but you know when it came straight down to it uh, i had to be honest with myself and and uh as I usually try to be and, and so by doing so I can be honest with you as well and so which brings me to my top favorite pick my number one pick out of my top six in 1980 to ACDC's Back in Black I mean what a landmark album uh, you know Bon Scott passes away, you know, ACDC starting to ride high and, and uh, really starting to slam it in their popularity. And especially in the States, they're doing great and uh, really taking off. And then all of a sudden Bon Scott passes away and, uh, you know, what's going to happen now? Um, I was a fan of ACDC back then. I remember being a little bit younger and going to the park like we used to have in, in my town in Ojai. Uh, we would have these um, Fourth of July parades, and then the parade would go up the main street, and then it would then it would go down uh, up Park Road, and then sort of dump off at Park Road, and there would be a big party and picnic, and there'd be bands playing, and there was there was I remember one year this one band that was uh, some older guys. One of the guys used to play in the music store, and I remember this other kind of I forget the guy's name, but he he would worked in the music stores for a while, but I remember he had a he had a, a clothespin for an earring, you know, a safe, uh, like a safety pin type thing. Not a clothespin, but a safety pin. Sort of, you know, and that was kind of a punk thing back then. But he had more like red hair and, and kind of long. He wasn't a punk, but just sort of, I don't know, maybe he was. Uh, I, I don't know how to, I, I don't want to categorize him. But anyways, it was very cool. And they did a lot of ACDC in the early stuff. But man, that's back in black. They get Brian Johnson in and this thing took off this was right out of the bat i mean every song on this album is a flipping hit you know um at least uh i'll have to i, I didn't really look at look up in the wikipedia because it's not one of my special editions but um you know it starts off with hell's bells just a great song shoot the thrill uh <laughs> what do you do for money honey great song give the dog a bone um let me put my love into you. I like that song too. So good. Back in black. Huge hit. You shook me all night long. Huge hit. Have a drink on me. Have a drink on me. Shake a leg and rock and roll ain't noise pollution. I mean, seriously, 10 songs that are absolute perfection. I don't know if there's ever been a more perfect record <laughs> produced anywhere at any time in the history of humanity. I don't know. This is, this, I don't know how I would rank this as an all time you know, say top 10 all time list where this would fall because it just seems like this one would be really high in the, uh, in the list for me. Um, there's a, uh, there is a, uh, there's a 
tribute band, I guess is what you call it. There's a tribute band um, that does ACDC, and they I've discovered them um, a couple of years ago, and the lead singer of my band in, told me, hey, I'm going down to the local, there's actually a club right down the street from my house. It's a bowling alley and a restaurant and a and also a, uh, a music venue. And they have this, um, I'm trying to, I think they're called, um, I want to say Power Age. Yeah, I think they're called Power Age. Um, but it turns out the two of the guys, the singer and the drummer, were from the same town that my uh, lead singer was raised. And kind of, he played in town with these guys and the same shows and stuff like that. And so I, I met them there and, oh my gosh, they were such a good cover band. And the lead singer, he nailed both the Bon Scott stuff and the Brian Johnson stuff, if you can believe it. Because, I mean... Out of any voice that you were going to imitate, I would never choose either one of those. Those are such hard voices to try to reproduce and sound like. And this guy just did a great job, and the band is great. And they had, you know, a little bit of a get up and, uh, uh, you know, a show. And, and the lead guitar, lead guitar player would dress up like Angus and do that whole bit. But, uh, man, they really just, you know, they perform the songs well. Super fun uh, to see them do that. Yeah. But uh, great songs, that whole album, woo, fantastic. But so yeah, that is um, that's pretty much my number one list, or my uh, my number one on the top six picks in 1980. But let's see what other songs, or what other albums there were in in 1980 that you know were you know released and super great as well. Like uh, Bruce Springsteen, The River was there, uh, Scary Monsters by David Bowie. Uh, Joy Division, um, Dire Straits Making Movies, that fell off my list. You got, And then you got, you know, uh, Double Fantasy by John Lennon. He was, you know, killed in December of 1980. And that album was released then. And that's a pretty good album, too. Prince's Dirty Mind. Uh, you got, uh, well, you got things like Emotional Rescue from the Stones. You got Boy from U2. They're starting to really come on. Uh, I think after you know they had a pretty big pretty big hits with Boy, but then after that they really took off. And then Ario Speedwagon was super popular then. And then you got like the Dead Kennedys for like the punk crowd and stuff. I had a bunch of buddies that were into that. Um, not me, not so much, but friends were. You got Peter Gabriel released an album. Pete Townsend, The Ramones. I, I had that album, Into the Century. I own that one. That was a great album. Glass Houses by Billy Joel. Blizzard of Oz by Ozzy Osbourne, Heaven and Hell, um, Black Sabbath, Van Halen's Women and Children First. You know, not my favorite Van Halen album, but still a really good one. I liked it. Uh, Gaucho by Steely Dan. And uh, yeah, that's right. I didn't pick a Steely Dan this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then there's Departure, Journey, Stevie Winwood, so many, XTC, The Jam, so many great, great uh, Crimes of Passion by Pat Benatar, oh, X uh, Los Angeles. Oh, I love that album. Uh, that was released in 1980. Gosh, I love that um, that X album, Los Angeles. I, we used to play a bunch of songs off of that. The Cars, uh, Panorama, and uh, Flesh and Blood from Roxy Music. I had most of these albums all shook up. Cheap, cheap Trick. Oh man, so many, so many albums. Uh, oh, and, and and you know, Queen the Game. I love Queen, and I love that album too. It's got some really great songs on there. Um, definitely a difficult uh, year for me to pick in a lot of ways, and then in some ways not so much because I pretty much knew what my top three were going to be, and and I wasn't sure exactly what order I was going to order them in. Um, but the but the but the bottom three, four, five, and six, um, they to me they just scream, you know, bringing in the eighties. They just scream. They're so. This has that sound to me. But anyway, so that's it. So the Pretenders is number six with Pretenders, and then uh, Remain in Light by Talking Heads number five, uh, the Police Zenyatta Mandata, and. Um, Genesis Duke uh, was number three for me. Uh, you know how I like my Genesis albums. Um, there's probably a couple more that might be in my list, but pretty soon they're going to dwindle. Um, 
and then Rush's Permanent Waves, uh, great album, and then the number one uh, classic ACDC, Back in Black, love that album, so good. And that's it. That's my top uh, six for uh, 1980. And we'll be, uh, we're going to be doing 80. Uh, we did that. And then we'll do 81, 82, 83. And then 84 will be our special edition this time. That way I, I get the same amount of, um, of uh, years in between each special edition. But we'll do that. And so that's all. Look forward to that. That's coming up real quick. Also tomorrow I have... Uh, my uh, album review coming up of um, Steely Dan's Asia with Jeff Castanon and a fantastic musician, songwriter, guitar player, uh, extraordinaire. And uh, he, we're going to look at that album. I have also got uh, uh, Tracy Longo's coming back on pretty quick here. We haven't nailed it down yet, but sometime soon, hopefully, uh, maybe this weekend. And we'll do a Led Zeppelin album. Not sure exactly which one yet, but I'm going to let him choose because he's somewhat of a Led Zeppelin expert. Um, also, while I'm working with, um, looks like uh, I'm going to have Kurt Sodergren coming in from Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, the drummer. So we'll be uh, talking with him and seeing what's going on. Uh, you know, it's kind of an interesting time doing all this when the musicians aren't really hardly working as much because of the COVID. So... Um, you know, get a little bit of access to some of these guys that might not normally, um, you know, be around, and especially guys like Kurt who travel a lot. And uh, so that's a lot to look forward to, and I'm pretty excited about it. And uh, that's it for today. So uh, make sure that you uh, check out some of the other um, shows. If, if you haven't, just click on to my, uh, my YouTube channel and check out what else is there and what other years I've already done, and we'll uh, get back with you in no time flat, and we'll see you in 1981. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Remember to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share, and comment down below. I'd like to know what you th were into in 1980. Uh, I think uh, I think it would be interesting to see and, and to hear from people that were into certain types of music, uh, maybe some of the same things I were, I was, and then maybe some other things too. It'd be interesting for me to know. So we'll catch you guys in 1981. See you guys.